Good. This is Per Tomlinson here. We're with another episode of Per and Mika. Today, in the organic capital food of the world, Baozhou, Inner Mongolia, China, we'll be sampling one of my favorite establishments, a six-star restaurant in the downtown district of Qingxia. See you there. Mika Landers here. I'm very pleased to be here with my old friend Per to bring you the tastes of Baozhou. Oh, I think our private car has arrived. Let's go meet him. Private cars here. Oh, very nice. Mm. Uh, private limo service here in Balto is very high quality. Um, actually, they decided to go fully green, so you get the comfort and swank of a nice western limo, but with no impact on the environment. Landers here. We are uh, bringing you a very special edition of Aaron Mika uh, here in Balto, which is uh, renowned by uh, those of a certain culinary sophistication as uh, one of the hubs of uh, the emerging organic food movement. So Balto people are very serious about food, and uh, if you're going to be you know, a serious uh, uh, culinary aesthete, uh, but also acknowledge your responsibility in an age of increasing concerns about global warming and climate change. I think that uh, we can all agree that organic food is the only responsible route uh, to satisfy yourself ethically and aesthetically. It's nice to have a chance to go to one of my favorite places every time I go to Balto. Um, six, it's a six-star restaurant. Um, uh, if you check uh, some other fine food critic uh, websites, you'll find out that some have labeled it as a six-and-a-half-star restaurant. Um, if you check fartacritic.com, um, AP, APC, Food for Thought M472 uh, biz slash Food for Thought uh, Food Critic Reviews Timeline 47 uh, HTML. You will find <laughs> you'll find that um, you you will get a fair and, and bi uh, unbiased <laughs> oh sorry unbiased reviews on food. Um, so I hope you can join me on this lovely lovely ride to one of my favorite places. In so here we are. And, uh, vital heart of Qingshan. Uh, as you can see, uh, economic development here is pretty stunning. And it's uh, a lot like a lot of other world cities I've been to. I mean, we're talking about, you know, the shopping districts of Paris, you know, the old city of London. Uh, it's, it's an incredible place. And we're about to enjoy some of the, uh, the fine dining opportunities that the new China can afford. Pair here with another culinary review coming to you from Baozhou, Inner Mongolia, China. We're here at one of my favorite places, Mardarlo's.
very niche and they choose to set up in places where people will have a new culinary experience, not be comparing it to things around them or things that they already know. So I'm here to review some of my favorite foods that I possibly will take influence from when I open up my Michelin star restaurant back in Paris. Let's begin. Here. Chicon mais non plus. These are a very, very special presentation. What you have is a deep, deeply uh, fried chicken filet wrapped in a nice breading. Um, and I'd like to ask my, my associate, Mika, this special sauce. What is this called? And explain it to uh, us. Well, that is a baby carrot Anjou reduction mm. uh, with a hint of it's a, uh, a local specialty, uh, Midr. Mm. Uh, it's derived from bees, actually. Uh, they will store it in honeycombs mm. to feed their young. Uh, Very so, rare. Yes. It's a rare treat. It is, yeah. A lot of people are stung by bees harvesting this. So it commands quite the premium at market. Mm, yes, uh, yes. Uh, shall we have a taste? <laughs> mm. Don't mind if I do, huh? Well, I'll tell you what. If you're watching your figure, stay away from these little guys. It's a taste explosion that I've never quite experienced before in my life. There are hints of farm-raised, almost corn-fed, no, hold on, mm. barley, sorry, barley-fed uh, wild chickens. Yes, take it from here, and um, dipping in, in this really releases the flavor. I mm. never had anything like it before. Got you on the next one. Here we are, we have a very special treat. Uh, this is a Chinese presentation of a local specialty, uh, Baozi presentation. Uh, they're called Fa Xiao Tu Do Piao. Baozi Chinese. And uh, what we have uh, translates literally to uh, sliced, uh, fried, salted potato strips. Let's see here. Get a look at some detail. Text. That's nice. It's got a, a sort of golden exterior here. Uh, it's slow cooked uh, in a vat of, I, usually it's saffron oil, but I think this may have a little bit of extra virgin that was added in uh, for uh, a culinary maneuver that I consider to be quite daring. Uh, so, it's, it's lightly salted here, and I, and I think that uh, the overall mm, jouissance uh, is going to be quite well balanced. We're going to try it here. Mm. Mm. You know, I was right about the olive oil the, for a dash of that, and I think, mm, I think the execution was good. Uh, you know, this is not a dish for beginners, uh, so it was uh, quite an honor to come here and uh, to, to have the Bauto uh, flair, if you will. Uh, mm. Oh boy, goodness. I may have a weakness for Fa Xiao Pu Do Pear here. On a hot summer day, when you're walking around critiquing restaurants, uh, trying different foods out, you work up a sweat, you work up an appetite, and most of all, you build up quite a mean thirst. Now, thank you. I have a local rare treat uh, made from the one only fruit grown around in these parts that can be used for this rare summer treat that can cool you down. Bear berries. Bear berries are grown in Baoto and this region in the desert area. So actually, these only come out one hour per year. These berries were picked uh, yesterday. You can freeze them. Don't worry, don't worry, guys. You can freeze them. Um, if you want to save some for later, but they only grow, pop out about once a year in the desert of Ka uh, Kalimakan. Uh, the Kalimakan Desert is famous for bear berries, and we actually had a chance to be able to come to this restaurant um, at, at the very time that they were producing this lovely drink. What we have here uh, is a, a very special, uh, their red dragon roosters. Mm. Now, this is, it's very interesting. Red dragon roosters were first cultivated in Baozhou in the 13th century AD. Uh, they were first raised in monasteries of monks who believed that the chickens had divine powers and 
Well, let me tell you, with the treatment that they received, they certainly have divine taste. Now, they call them red dragon roosters because they are only grown in a few monasteries buried deep in the mountains, built into the side of a cliff, a very steep cliff, that gets uh, its water supply from a local spring that is also thought to have magical properties. So pieces of the Scottish island of Islay. Now, most people would say, well, hold on, rocks aren't actually food, you can't eat them. But, the special thing about the island of Islay was it was formed over what's called a subdermal volcanic drift zone. Now, and what's special about that is you, what you get is it's almost like uh, uh, igneous whipped cream. It's, it's creamy, and airy, and I uh, just delectable. It's, it's getting easy. Mmm. Mmm. A little bit of crunch, a little bit of mm, uh, a little earthy flavor. It's, it's very nice. Hey guys, here, here. Welcome to McDernland's. Um, we're gonna go through what we rated each food one by one. First off, we had the Bear Barrier Refreshments. As you can see, I gave it a justified score of a 9.82. 9.82 for the Bear Barrier Refreshments. We love the way it cooled you down. We love the way it turned the frown upside down. Um, next, we had the Fasho to do Pia. We gave it a justified 9.71 out of 10. I actually have never had one better than the one we had today. Next, we had the Red Dragon Rooster. I am going out on a limb here, but I might say that it was the best presentation of a Sanminjir I've ever had in my life. Red Dragon Rooster to die for. 9.96. Next we had the British Burger. The British Burger we gave a 9.27. Daring. Maybe a little too daring. Last we had a Burkles. I've never had a bad Burkle in my life. These Burkles were as good as any other ones in a simple presentation just of steaming them. Presented in a nice cup, given a justified 9.41. In McDernlow's, uh, we didn't expect that we would actually be sitting down for a review, but we figured it was time because everyone deserves to know about this little hole in the wall that I hope becomes one of the cornerstones of modern cuisine. 48 
out of 50. Thank you.